So let's say, here's our trampoline, let's say. Okay. Let's say here's the ground. Let's say the trampoline. How tall is the trampoline? Four feet above the ground? Yeah. All right. And so you got this athlete. Here she is at, I'll put a zero on here, okay? Here she is at time zero. Um, she's going to go to the apogee. Well, this is your homework, right? If you already did this, you don't need to copy it down. So here she is at the top at the apogee. What do you know about the apogee? All right, and and they also want to know halfway up. They want to know her velocity. So I'm going to call this. Here's your math. Your point. I kind of call this point two. So v2 equals question mark. All right. Now I'm going to use conservation of energy to solve this. You could use chapter three or chapter actually chapter two. This one dimensional um, to solve this. But uh, let's use conservation of energy. So I'm going to start by writing out conservation of energy. And conservation of energy, in short terms, tells you the total energy of the system at one time is going to equal the total energy at some other time in your system. And our system is defined as, I have circled our system. So everything in that box, the energy is going to remain constant over time. Okay? What's our total energy comprised of when we're at any one of these points, generally speaking? We've got what? We've got some, they gave us the initial velocity here, right? Well, what types of energy are you guys aware of? We've got some kinetic energy, potential energy. Yep. What about our trampoline? We've got some spring energy, too. Will we use any spring energy for this problem? A better problem would have had you on the spring, like this, and you would have had it compressed. Or when it comes back down, you can say if, if she's compressed this, like, by, I don't know, half a meter, then you could actually figure out what the spring constant is. All right? Or given a spring constant, you could tell how far this is going to stretch. All right? And by the way, that's another clever example of using Hooke's Law on springs, because the tra trampoline would probably act pretty well as a Hooke's Law approximation. All right. Remember there's an opportunity to do some bonus for your, uh, your lab? That's one of the bonuses. Come up with another clever way to do it. So if anybody has something like this at home, feel free. So, yeah, you're trampling it out in your backyard. In the, buried in the snow. You'd have to shovel it out. All right. So what's the total energy consist of then? Now we're going to go at time zero here. We have some potential energy at time zero um, due to gravity. We have some kinetic energy at time zero. Um, plus, I actually, in, in my form of the conservation of energy equation, I have any work not conserved that's done, and that's going to equal my potential energy due to gravity at time one plus any kinetic energy at time one. All right, that's where you start. That's what the conservation of energy equation looks like when we start plugging stuff into it. All right? This is work non conservative. Yeah, so that's what you find. This is from my lecture. You, you, once you watch my lecture, you'll know where that came from. All right? Some of these things are zero. Well, I guess before we start I, before we start here, which of these things are zero and why? On the left side? If you, if you decide your height is zero, where? So you've got to define a zero height someplace. And it doesn't matter where you define it. You can define it on the ground, four feet below the the trampoline. You could define it. Uh, maybe maybe you guys live off top on a, a top of a hill. Maybe the bottom of the hill is your zero height, or maybe you live in a valley and you can say the top of the valley is your your initial height. Doesn't matter where you define initial height. It'll all work out in the end. All right. So we've got our, our initial height here. We want to find that height there. All right. And they once we find that height, we can take half of it and we can use it for that height. So by this definition right here, we're going to zero that up because that's uh, our potential energy to gravity is zero. Uh, anything else zero up here? There's two other things that are zero. The kinetic energy, which one? 
And remember, we're looking at time one up here and time zero up here, what we're solving for right now. This is this equation written for that. The one on the right side is zero because our velocity equals zero, all right? And our y velocity is zero. Don't forget, in 2D motion, you have an x and a y velocity to be concerned about. The y drops to zero, so you can use energy with that. Um, anything else zero up here? Is there any non-conservative work being done? What's non-conservative work? Work done by what? Friction. Is there any friction happening here? No, no air resistance. Air resistance would be a source of non-conservative work. How about you? Are you doing any work? Yeah, you're jumping on the trampoline. You're in the air here, so you can't jump while you're in the air, right? If you were actually jumping on the trampoline, that would be non-conservative work that you'd be adding to propel yourself, right? In this case, this we're already we've already left it. We've left the trampoline, so there's none here. All right. Okay. And so what we end up with is this simple simple formula that our our kinetic energy initially is going to equal our potential energy due to gravity final. What's the formula for kinetic energy? And what's our potential energy due to gravity? One half K. Nope, that's for a spring. It's mass times gravity times height one. All right. What do you notice cancels out here, both sides? Masses. Masses cancels, it turns out. Lucky, because they didn't give us a mass. And they asked us to find the height, so I can solve this for height real quick. So our height one is going to equal what? It's V naught squared over 2G. Same thing, right? And that'll get you your answer. All right. Plug in some numbers, and you're going to get whatever answer they give there, 1.3 meters. If I do this in my head, it's 1.38 meters. All right. All right. It's up, there, up on top of the screen there. <laughs> I didn't really do it in my head, Sam. Okay. And test it out if you want to try that. Um, so that's part A. Part B. Now, find the speed of the athlete when she's halfway up to her maximum height. Well, same thing. Um, I can start from any starting point here. Um, we know what the height is now, so we, we'll know what half the height is now. So half our height, so height 2 is half of the 1.38 meters. Okay. So I can do the same setup here. Um, I can take my potential energy to gravity at time zero plus my kinetic energy at time zero plus my work not conservative and set that equal to my potential energy to gravity at time two plus my kinetic energy at time two. Okay. Um, once again, there's a couple things that are zero here. That's zero from before. That's zero from before. Neither of the things on the right are going to be zero. But we know some things. We know our height two equals one half of the 1.38. All right. So we can plug those in. So if we just work out our equation, we get one half mv naught squared equals mg h2 plus one half mv2 squared. Everybody agree? What well, cancels again? Yes. Math doesn't matter. There's Alicia online again. What class is going to use? Always is playing with her phone in that class. We'll have to track her down during this period. Um, solve for your final velocity. We are, we know everything else in here. We know that. We know that. We know that. Solve for that. That's how easy these these uh, conservation of energy problems are.